so hot. That's what are you doing here? Well. Good morning everyone, happy Sunday. We are on our way to church. And how are you feeling, Mahal? I'm awake, good morning, it's Sunday. Yeah, it's been really hot in Davao City lately. People might be wondering what I'm doing wearing a long sleeve shirt. Well, sometimes the heat actually penetrates the skin, you know, so that's something I need to be careful of as well. Let me just show you how hot it is right now in Davao. I don't know if it's showing on camera, but it's been really hot for us here. And um, yeah, how are you holding up? Good, the weather's changing, it's getting hotter. <laughs> it's getting even hotter. Even people that lived here a long time, they're like, wow, it's something different. It's a difference in the air. So it's a different kind of heat. Uh, I thank the Lord that there's uh, places of, of uh, comfort and rest. I do pray for those who have to consistently work in the sea because it's uh, it's very draining. I find it's very draining. But uh, I thank the Lord for his, uh, for his mercy and his loving kindness in our lives. But you know what? One of, the, one of the benefits of that is everything grows here. So farming and gardening per se is a bit easier because of the uh, beneficial climate. So that's cool. So I like that. And it's uh, a prayer that the whole week has been a feast for you as far as God's word. Itself in our lives from the beginning, saying nothing was wrong with what I have created. He actually looked back and said, Wow, everything that I created was good. Every single thing that he created was good. He created.
Tess, what are you doing here? Well, our Elise Artisan products, just soap, it's not just for soap anymore. Uh, we're doing candle stir, so we just poured in the fragrance. It's white tea, you have to know. And we stir that for two minutes so they can blend. And we're gonna let the temperature get down at a pouring temperature. So we're finishing up an order that we have. The other ones are mango and then bamboo. So everyone's favorite flavors. Thanks for tuning in. Mangosteen from Tito Daddy. All right, are you ready to open a mango I'm ready to open a mango <laughs> which I'm so grateful for that we have here in the Philippines. I take the top off. That's yes. how I normally so, do it. Yeah, that's how you would do it. You take the top off and squeeze it. And then it opens. Yes. And here's where the beautiful part is inside. This is the edible part, which I love. And here's like little fruit roll-ups. They're so good. One of my top list of fruit buco, coconut being number one, langkat, which is jack for two, and then mangosteen being number three. So check it out in your local uh, food store in the Philippines if you can actually grow these, which is fantastic. So I hope them agree. Don't do this to me, box car. We are grateful for rain. Yeah, it's raining. Finally, it's raining. After so many days of being really hot, we're grateful for the rain. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in this week. To, what is this, our 10th episode? Episode 10. Episode 10, we made it. Yeah. An episode. We have to do something special for this episode. We have a few questions, right? Three. Three questions. Answer for you guys. Not that you necessarily ask them, but they've been asked, so let's answer them. What is the first question, and how are you today? I'm well. Thank you so much for asking me. <laughs> <laughs> and how about you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm awake. Great. It's a good start. That's such a nice answer. I'm awake. <laughs> Is it an interesting answer? Yes. <laughs> what is the first question? So, all right. So the first question is, how did it feel getting married much later in life? Because to give everyone some context and background, I was 38, you were 40 when mm -hmm. we got married. So. That's true. Um, from my perspective, and I'm different from a lady, it wasn't <laughs> that uh, much of a deal with the age 
thing, just because I figured it would happen based on the Lord's timing. I would say it's probably different for a female. There's not necessarily the same pressure on a man uh, to get married, like by a certain age. Uh, I know that that oh, normally right. happens yeah. in society, but uh, so it wasn't. It wasn't a bad thing. It just it, it seemed like when the timing was right, it was 100% the Lord's timing, not on ours. Um, but yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't odd to me. I'll say that it wasn't odd. How about you? Was it a little different for you? It was different for me, definitely. Sorry. Being a woman and being Asian, being Filipino, being a Filipina, um, you know, uh, there is an expectation that you are to be married by a certain age, you know. I honestly, for a long time, because before we were ever together, I was kind of like um, happy where I was. I uh, had a business. And I was um, taking care of the business along with some people, my brothers. And um, so it was fun to, because I get to, I, wa I didn't feel lonely per se a lot. But of course, there was something deep within that kind of like was asking the Lord if this was His will for me to mm -hmm. one day be married. I remember, and I think I mentioned it before in the blog, but I remember praying to the Lord and you know Lord you know I'm satisfied if it's just this if I was just going to be single my whole life uh, however if it's not your will that I be single uh, his will be done over my life so lo and behold you know um, after that prayer not immediately after but after praying that for quite some time um, the Lord showed Lance and I that we were each other's um, spouse <laughs> so to answer the question it did feel in the beginning it did feel kind of strange because I was used to certain habits and I was used to doing things a certain way and I think once you're much older you formulate your own like opinions and your own way of doing things so the one major change for me was learning how to live with one with another person not i've never lived with another person i was in a relationship before but not in this scale it's different we're together every day every day, every day. that's good it's a good answer it's definitely more detailed than mine but it, i can understand it because i'm not a filipino woman so but i understand the background has a huge and the culture has a huge part of that too you know to ask maybe the the question that people may ha always have did you ever get like um questions or comments from relatives all the time <laughs> like you know and it's so cute because they also have suggestions on what i should be doing <laughs> to meet people but eventually you know it was truly just the hand of god that you know arranged everything and through prayer and i guess uh through his grace and, uh, you know, I will, you know, this is what, what happened. Amen. Amen. I'll ask the next question. Okay. What makes our marriage work? I pose that to you. What makes our marriage work? I think it's because coming into our marriage, we understood that what really bonded us together was the love of God. That's really it. Because if we just look at each other and uh, all we can see human as we are are each other's imperfections but understanding that we are both being perfected in god's love day by day based on our individual walks with the lord it's now easy to forgive it's now not easy but easier i guess easier to forgive it's easier to um love without condition you know so uh, just understanding the depth of like God's love for me and for him, of course. The amount of dying to self, the selflessness is, I think, is something that I sure have to work on and God is working in my heart with regards to that. But I guess the selflessness, it's like a constant thing. It's uh, putting the other, as the Bible says, putting the other person as more important as yourself or considering the other as more important as yourself. Humility <laughs> makes our marriage work. Yeah. I, I, I agree. It's the, it's the Lord. It's not us. 
it's definitely not us because we, like Liza had stated, we'll see each other's imperfections. We are used to a certain way of life. And so even the, the concept of marriage, of how we understood it prior to being believers in Christ is very different from actual marriage, right? Godly marriage. It's not the same thing how the world portrays marriage versus how it actually is uh, as per God's plan. And so an understanding and a learning of that also goes along with us being together. So it's not like, oh, we know what this is. We got it. Like we don't know. And so we're really being uh, helped by the Lord daily. And so again, it's, it's, I think another part of that is with turning to the Lord in these things, it's also not going to outside sources. So a lot of the things that we would do in past relationships before being saved, we don't bring that into this one. So it really is, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a new understanding, it's a new learning. Mm, that's um, good. But it's definitely turning to the Lord and knowing what helps me, that he knows everything. He definitely knows more than me. And so even when I get feelings or stuff like this, I gotta put it in check to be slower to speak and to really go in prayer, into the word, speak to my wife, um, that helps, that helps. Even if I don't initially have understanding, eventually it comes. And I think that makes yeah. a big, big difference. Amen. And we're both very opinionated people. <laughs> we nice. always have something to say. So, but yeah, we're learning how to communicate. Yeah. Um, and even in our communicating with each other, being uh, just together um, as you know maybe in a relationship and being husband and wife it's also very different so it's like you said very new yeah. to us you're was, not, i'm sorry i was gonna say you're not stopping who you are you're learning who the other person yeah. is because too often people think you've got to put away uh, or shelf who you are that's not correct you're learning who the other person is and that's where compromise and you're learning about each other i think that becomes a, a thing because there's equal voices mm. Equal, equal voices in, in a marriage. So, yay! And then. The last question is: What relationship advice would you have for someone who is younger? Wow! Uh, don't make any of the mistakes I made. No, I'll be more specific. Uh, I, I think one of the things is to really first find Christ. I, I know there's so many things that seem more important than that, or that might not seem important, but it's truly salvation. And I'll, there's a reason I'm stressing in this context is important because in, in the word of God it says seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be provided for you. Too often we're brought up and we were brought up thinking the same thing that we're providing for ourselves and having you know that realization later in life that's not the case. If I could uh, impart that to someone younger that the best way for a successful relationship is not just you picking who you think. Right? We've learned that time and time again, that our choices based on what we see, what we think, are flawed. God knows the whole story. So there's been people even before we were together that I would have assumed, oh, this will work. The Lord made very clear, it's not going to work. So trust the Lord in that and wait. Get to know a person. There's an order in which in our, in our walk, just in our walk, we became friends first and we were having Bible studies prior to anything else even entering in. Like it wasn't even a concept for either of us of dating or marriage. We weren't even thinking about that. Nor did we put together how we met. So all of these things we attribute every aspect of our relationship back to God. So we see it wasn't us. We can't blame the other person like you did this. We truly see it was the Lord that both brought us together, uh, has facilitated the marriage, all these different things. and so. That's my advice for someone that's younger is number one, get to know the person. Don't rush into things. Don't cave into pressure. I know it can be tough because of family and friends and your age. Stop. God doesn't rush you. He, he gives us time. So that time of that, that small, soft voice that you can hear and make a decision where it's not through anxiety or impetuousness, uh, do that. And if you can avoid some of the mistakes, trust what the Lord's saying. No matter what the word tells you is correct, trust what God says. That would be the best advice. Yeah, that's very good. And uh, for me, it's like finding your identity first in the Lord before getting into a relationship. Because um, I know that as Lance and I are growing closer and closer to the Lord, we're actually getting closer and closer with each other. I've heard that somewhere. That Don't quote me on that because that's not mine. But... Uh, 
I, I do know the importance of knowing yourself first in the Lord and your identity as a child of God before getting into uh, marriage. And that will help you help you understand what your the purpose of your marriage is for that that God had a divine purpose why he puts people together and I was gonna just add one thing is that another person in a relationship will compliment you they will not complete you so if you're looking for completeness or your wholeness in another person it's not correct it's not there your, your, your fullness is going to be found in God and it's your identity and another person will come alongside and compliment that and you can help each other on your walk forward amen but another person is not the one who's going to complete you amen so very good advice well thank the Lord for that and thank you guys for uh, for tuning in anything else you'd like to that's say all we that's, well, that's it. it Wow well guys thank you so much for tuning in this week don't forget to like comment and subscribe to, to team Mahal. Mahal we'll see you next time guys God bless God bless you Thank you.